I'm back with you in the Midwest Model Shop. So in today's episode, we're getting back into the Titanic. We're going to go ahead and cover a couple of things. First of all, uh, I've been working on Titanic for all this time. And basically what we've been doing is working on the boat deck details. Now, none of the super fancy stuff. All the boring things like basic railing, ladders, all of the vents and fans that go on. Stuff that you just basically you cut out you paint it up and you stick it on the model. There's nothing really earth shattering there. So I've worked on that. I didn't film any of it, but we're gonna go ahead right away and take a good look at everything that's going on that I've accomplished so far, uh, while Nora tells you a little story about Titanic. Then what we'll do, because I know people like to watch me build stuff, we will go ahead and build the aft second class stairwell structure on the back of the ship. Uh, we'll touch on installing glass, putting on the picture frames, uh, putting in railing, a little bit of paint detail, and then another little tutorial on railing for those of you who uh, haven't, haven't watched some of the other episodes. Uh, and that's basically where we are at currently on uh, my customer's build. Next month, for the month of October, unfortunately, we're probably only going to be seeing some shop talk videos for the whole month. I got a phone call from my job and they said, hey, we've got this opportunity for you if you're interested in taking this position. Uh, but it's kind of short notice and it would require you to uh, hit the road for about 30 days. Uh, it is for the better, uh, which is why I said yes, and it's exactly one month and not longer. So um, unfortunately, we won't be getting much done on Titanic during the month of October, but we're getting towards the end. Um, and so I want to just go ahead and show what I've gotten accomplished at this point. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. So anyway, uh, I hope you're all doing well. Let's go ahead and get in the build. We'll start off with just showing off what we've done so far. Nora will tell a story, and then we'll address um, some of the other things that are going on. All right, cool. Okay, let's go ahead and look at this deck detail while Nora goes ahead and tells a story. The Titanic may have been brand new, but the lethal iceberg that brought the vessel to the bottom of the sea was at the end of a very long life. Scientists estimate that the first snowflakes that made up the glacier that produced Titanic iceberg fell on the western coast of Greenland thousands of years before the collision. Over time, the snow turned into a more compact form called fern, which over decades and centuries is compressed into dense ice by the weight of newer snow on top of it. Eventually, this mass of ice, now a glacier, reaches the sea and tides break off huge chunks of ice, birthing or calving an iceberg, which floats out into the nearby Arctic Ocean and then heads south to the Atlantic. At this point, the iceberg begins to slowly die over several years because even icy water is warm enough to gradually melt an iceberg. The specific chunk that hit the Titanic probably calved in 1910 or 1911 and was gone forever by the end of 1912. But in 1912, there were also other forces at work that brought the ship and the iceberg together. Greenland is the source of almost all icebergs afloat in the North Atlantic, the section of ocean where the Titanic foundered is known as Iceberg Alley, and some years are more crowded than others. That year was one of the worst. After the sinking, the U.S hydrographic office scientists interviewed by the New York Times in May 1912 said that Arctic weather conditions during the preceding year played an important role in the creation of an enormously large crop of icebergs from the West Greenland glaciers. In 1911, an unusually hot summer in the Arctic had been followed by a mild winter, causing more calving and quicker movement of icebergs farther south into the Atlantic shipping lanes. Nearly a century later in the 1990s, an American tide expert at the no National Ocean Survey proposed that those weather conditions combined with yet another factor, a highly unusual confluence of astronomical events that led to unprecedented tides earlier that year. The sun, earth, and moon were aligned in January 1912 in a way that had not been seen since the year 796, resulting in high tides that likely saved the iceberg from running aground on the Labrador, Labrador or Newfoundland coast, its expected fate, and instead moved it quickly down into Iceberg Alley. It joined a fleet of other icebergs and growlers, smaller floating pieces of ice, that towered over Titanic survivors as they bobbed in their lifeboats after the sinking. 
its deadly work done, the 28 degree water that had killed so many passengers with hypothermia ensured the iceberg's own demise later that year. So here we are with the second class aft uh, staircase. The bulk of the assembly is done. We've put our little photo etch parts on top here, the doors on the side, uh, this little cover they've got, and then we've gone ahead and primed it and then painted it in Tamiya XF flat white. That's the roof, which I'm using a light ghost gray from Model Master. FS, if you can get it, a light ghost gray, whatever your, whatever your preferred choice is for the top. And then uh, we've got our piece on the top here, which I removed the kit back door because I didn't see it in any of the drawings. I just saw this one. Uh, and then it goes like so. And this would be the, what, the back of the ship? Yeah. And this would be facing towards the bow. So now what we need to do at this point is go ahead and install our glass windows. All right, as a quick refresher for some of you, I'm just using uh, evergreen canopy glue, just a white, dries clear is a big point, and flexible uh, adhesive. It's basically just white glue. And let's see here, let's start off with this piece in the middle. So all I'm gonna do is take a toothpick, use a little bit of white glue and touch it just to these edges. You, you don't need a lot, you just need enough, right? That's kind of how it goes. So what's the deal with the uh, windows here? Because I, I actually personally just have a couple left here myself. Grab your window. And maneuver it into position. Like that. And it's installed. And that little bit there will dry up. You can even just go ahead and scrape it off if you want to. Uh, so Nora makes these windows in her spare time. I actually have no idea how to do them uh, with the Cricut. I wrote... I gave her the dimensions for everything, and that was it. She went ahead and produced them. A couple things. One, they are extremely labor-intensive for her to make. They, they take a lot of time uh, because once the machine cuts them out, there's just a gazillion of them all over the place, and she has to cleanly remove them from the other stock and then make sure there's enough of them, and then they all end up being put into a little pre-made labeled baggies that we also have to make. I can make the labels, that's where they came from. So that's how that is. Uh, unfortunately, life here at home has resulted in an epic amount of work that has nothing to do with building models and everything to do with just living uh, than we kind of an, had anticipated uh, when we set up the website, when we created uh, these windows and that situation has not exactly improved at all right now. We're hoping it will this winter, but at the moment it has not. And so, you know, if you are waiting on windows to continue your build, I recommend making your own at this point. I mean, that actually is how I started out. Uh, the first bunch of windows on this build, um, I cut out by hand. I just looked at it and figured out shape that I wanted my uh, clear parts to be. We're using styrene for this and that was it. I let it go. And then I realized that if I cut them out on a Cricut it would go a lot faster. So that is why I had Nora make them. But she, it, like I said, it takes a long time. And so I'm saying this because I know there's like... I, I've I've probably got 30 emails, not including the, the PMs and everything from people saying, hey, when are you going to have more windows available? Um, I'm sorry if you knew about it originally and you didn't jump on them. And I know I've had people say, hey, set, set some aside for me when you get around to it. Literally, like I don't even have time to be home. I don't have time right now to even be doing this, unfortunately, personally. Uh, and my wife is even busier than I am, which is just incredible and blows my mind. So 
That's why we don't have windows yet. If you can be patient, eventually she'll make some more because every time you guys email me and say, hey, I want a window, I let her know that uh, there's an extremely high demand for them. And she's aware of that. She just doesn't have time. Uh, so what I'm hoping will happen here, and she is too, she told me that, well, maybe we'll just get a day here eventually where things will slow down enough we could sit down and just knock out a whole bunch of these kits. That's what uh, we're kind of hoping for. So like I said, if you need to make your own, I totally understand that. Go ahead and do that at this point so that you can uh, move on with your model kit. Or, you know, don't put the glass windows in. I mean, Trumpeter's intention, K.A. and Pontos, was all for you to not have windows installed in this, not have glass. Just like the movies do it, right? And, and that's a little fun fact. So see this cool glare? Yeah, I'll let you know there's glass in there. The movies don't want that. They want to be able to see right inside uh, without anything reflecting the light, which is why they just put window frames on here. Speaking of which, we need to do that next. Okay, I'm going to try and do this without screwing up. I'm going to take a toothpick with just a little bit of CA glue in it. I'm just going to dab the corners here of my glass where I want the frame to go. We're going to turn it level because we want gravity to help us. I'm very carefully going to set our piece down. Make a quick adjustment to it, and we're done. That's it. That's the frame. Do that one more time here. Th this is one of those, uh, the slower, you, it, it's, it's, it's a long distance race, right? It's not, a, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon, not a sprint. That's what I'm trying to say. The more you do this, the more you practice this, the better you will get you will be forced into this because Titanic has a gazillion windows and window frames. So it's, it's going to happen. Don't, be, don't give up and get frustrated if right away things don't turn out perfectly uh, like you want. So let's go ahead and get the other uh, four installed. Okay, so all of our little window frames are in and everything. And so I decided the next thing I want to do is put in the main railing uh, that goes around the top here. And so this one's actually kind of an easy one to do because there's this lip and it's raised and it runs around the entire perimeter of the top. And we're gonna go ahead and set our roof in there. And because of that, there are 90 degree corners right here, which makes bending it uh, really easy to do. We just have to line everything up precisely and make our bends. Someone's asking, Someone was asking me what um, which photo bender do I use, and I couldn't remember the name because it's on the road. This is what I use: the hold fast and fold. Um, you can get this on. I think at the time I ordered it on eBay, and he might sell his stuff on Amazon also now. This is very expensive, but it's made in the United States, uh, made by hand. Uh, well, by the C guy's CNC machine or milling machine, and. It's held up for years. I look at this as an investment. It's a tool that I use all the time, especially if you're dealing with these massive detail sets. So, and then it comes with this folder if you don't want to use a razor blade uh, so you can get your part bent. So, now that we have all of that out of the way, uh, we're gonna go ahead and figure out how we're gonna do this, right? So, here's our piece. And essentially, these short ends right here end up sitting like this, right on the inside, right there. So that means we could go ahead and bend a 90 in this right away and just start working our way around. All right, there's our first bend. Sorry about the air compressor. I've been doing a little airbrushing. And the piece is going to sit 
right in here, like so. Would liked it, would have liked it if this post, my fingers out of the way so you guys could see. All right, so it sits like this. I would have liked it if this post had ended up exactly in the corner. And it's real early on in our process here, right? I can, I can get rid of this bend, remove it, and give myself some slack if I want to uh, move the corner to here. But we need to see if I do that, where am I gonna end up? And, and you can use calibers and measuring, but you don't have it, we'll just, we'll just eyeball it, right? So if we do that, what I see is if that post ends up in the corner, this post does not end up in the corner. Uh, in fact, they both end up directly on the outside, which does leave me to believe that maybe the intention here will work. Uh, it'll work if I put it on the outside, but both posts have to have a bend that comes around the corner. Does that make sense? Hopefully you can see what I'm saying here. So neither one of the posts will end up directly in the corner if I center that up. Um, so that being said, this one, I'm gonna just go ahead and bend it to fit exactly where it's supposed to, right on that 90 right here on this corner. And we're gonna go ahead and uh, follow it around and see how it works out. So let me go ahead and get these bends in there and we'll see where we're at. All right, here we go. This is just dry fitted in a place and I just made very precise 90 degree turns. And what I ended up with is something that fits really close. I looked closely at KA's instructions. They do intend for you to fit this piece inside of that lip uh, that I showed you earlier. So I'm just going to go ahead now and what I'm going to do is just very carefully take some CA glue and apply it to kind of these corners right here and just work our way around uh, installing the piece. Okay. Just light little bits of CA glue. And the idea being that if anything gets pushed out and too globby, uh, we could come back with the appropriate color paint and touch it up. The key is going to be, because of the way that I made this, folded everything, uh, get your corners tucked in. That way, like you can see there, it went all the way into the corner. Now I've got some slack here, and I'll use that to uh, fill this space in along the front. And I'll actually pull this out of the way just slightly. You don't need a ton of CA glue you don't even need the whole thing to connect in all the same spots. Um, you just need enough of them to hit, right? That it stays straight. Just like that. That's what we're looking for. Okay, now this one's a little more difficult because it's the final one, so I'm going to have to pull it in like this and make a gap. Uh, to fill everything in and it's it's yeah it's bowed out a little bit um, that's just the nature of the PE before I got to it but that's okay all right and then we're gonna push it in make sure it's down this tucked up nice and tight there that grabbed really well and we'll just put a little dot right back here for this uh, 
Last little leg just in the corner there. Push it up and forward like that. Let it sit for a second and we're done. So there's a piece right here. I forgot to pre-paint that that's drying right now. But there we go. There's our railing all installed. Uh, looks nice around that edge. So just another, so someone had made a comment about, well, I don't really like uh, using the masking tape. And you know, to, this is an easy one because you just got to fit it inside. But the big deal with railing is you got to take your time. You got to be patient and you have to think about how you're going to do it and then um, slowly execute the maneuvers and, and, and go slow down the road. Start in one spot, leave yourself an out so that if it doesn't go well, you could take it off, start over again, uh, hopefully without mangling anything. Again, this is one of those, it takes a lot of practice type of items. All right, so I've got our little last piece of railing right there installed. I also went ahead and threw on the ladders that go right there. And then of course the ladder that goes up on top. And now all I gotta do is glue the top of the staircase to the top of the base right there, which I'm gonna do at this point. Uh, it just makes sense for the pieces that we have left. And it's not too crazy hard. So, and this isn't like a super critical structural thing. So I'm gonna use my Tamiya Extra Thin to go ahead and make this happen. So the next thing we'll address is those little holes right there on either side. So that is part Y40, which I've already gone ahead. There's two of them and uh, prepared. So these are just the little vents and let's see if we can get in view there for you. Uh, I went ahead and hit it with the um, metal primer first just to get the surface broken up, regular primer and then spray painted it with Tamiya flat white. And now that we have this piece on, it's not a big deal to go ahead and set those down into position, uh, not having to worry about straddling here yeah, it's just easier to do this way. All right, and there is a little detail on the front. See right there, that's a little label. I, I didn't paint that yet. Um, I'm going to hit that with some paint after this thing's installed. And we're going to go ahead and use CA glue because we're using a resin piece and we're attaching it to a plastic part. We'll drop in position just like that. Works out nicely, that big vent. I forget what these vents are called, but uh, you got a gazillion of them. All right, and then here's the other one. Well, it can be a little precarious setting these up on top of a hole it gives the CA glue somewhere to go if you have a little bit of excess and it sets up all right that way. All right, so there we go. Um, now that that is complete, this whole thing will set in position. The last thing we need to do, there's a little bit of railing that gets installed uh, right here on either side of these windows. It's the same as I've done previous videos, but we'll go ahead and show how to do that too. Okay, so this is a two-part process. Here's our tiny little railing, uh, and there's a total of four. I'm just going to set the flat part in some CA glue, then tip it flat so gravity helps you, and set it into position. Hopefully, it stays upright. And we'll let that dry. Then when we come back, oh, make sure it's straight. When we come back, we'll hit it with some paint, and that will aid in securing it to the side of the bulkhead right here, just like that. All right, all we gotta do is knock out the other ones. Okay, so those are installed. I'm gonna very carefully pick it up, and you can see they're, they're teeny tiny, 
and they are attached with the CA glue. So what I want to do now is accomplish painting it and at the same time adding additional security to the hull, meaning securing it to the bulkhead. So we'll drop our flat white Tamiya paint on here and by getting it along this edge it'll help it to disappear to the naked eye and now the paint when it dries will act as an additional adhesive uh, to provide it with some strength so it doesn't go anywhere that is that is the big thing right we want it to stay for forever we'll just do like that and then uh, for this piece, I haven't in a lot of the other big ones because there's, this is so small, I'm going to flip it over and get it on the back side as well. Because you can get to it. And while we're here, let's grab the other ones. Just a nice thin layer. It's Tamiya, so you, you, you know, with the brush you get to apply it one time and that's it. You gotta let it dry because otherwise it just turns into a big gummy mess. But you can see it basically disappeared, right? Which is what we want. We'll go back to the top on this side. Get some paint right along here. So the last thing we gotta do now that it's set up is paint our brown railing which we'll do once the glue's dried I'll just run a little bit along that edge right there okay let's let that dry and come back pressing on all right let's see if we can do this here my camera without making too big of a mess of things I just want to hit that outer railing on the top it's all I'm really worried about because you're going to be looking down at the model you could flip it over and worry about getting the bottom of this brown, but at this point, it just doesn't really matter. I think that looks pretty good. Spin it around. We've got the other side to do. Again, just a fine point brush. You're basically dry brushing, just touching up against the edge of the railing, and there you go. Not a real big deal. You don't even truly need a steady hand. You just got to get close. And there you, that's it. Looks sharp, huh? All right, let's go ahead and uh, stick it on the ship. Okay, we're coming back with our orange glue. Putting just a little bit along the edge. Now, someone had asked about online recently, so I asked about the blue colored tube that's non-toxic. Yes, it's non-toxic. It doesn't have any fumes. And like everything else in the world from back then that was kind of non-toxic, it, it doesn't really work. I mean, yeah, it'll glue your stuff together, but it's not going to melt the plastic to itself and you're gonna end up with, with troubles. Uh, it's going to break on you. I'm going to also add a dot of CA glue just to help tie this thing in. Um, yeah, the non-toxic stuff just isn't for structural things, unfortunately. Okay. Push it in a position like this. You know, new, new non-toxic things today work out great. Like, you know, life color paints, K's paints, their, their new model. Um, well, they might still be toxic, but they're less bad than enamels. Okay, that's that for now. On the other side here, there's a little piece that I cut away. It's photo etch I got to make. Uh, we'll get to that in a later episode, but that takes care of this. Let's go address um, one other issue here. Okay, we're back over here at uh, funnel number three. And what I want to do is zoom in here so you can see... There's a hole right there. That hole is not addressed by anything in the KA instructions. It's just, it's just there. So I went and pulled out the kit instructions and found out that there is a part, I, th 
I believe it's Hotel 9. It's this little piece that uh, Trumpeter intends for you to put there. So that's what I did for this piece on the uh, port side of Funnel 3. Go to your kit and instructions. All right, so that basically takes care of today. Uh, now you guys all know where we are at and you've taken a good look at the build so far and I apologize that we're not further along. It's taken a lot of effort to get to this point and life's been extremely busy and unaccommodating. But uh, yeah, it's looking good. Don't forget to give a like and subscribe. We'll get back to you as soon as you can. I hope everyone's safe and enjoy the fall. We'll see you.